In this video, we're going to discuss Hubble's law and delve a little bit deeper into the way astronomers analyze the Hubble plot to figure out aspects of the universe such as its age and the rate that the expansion is happening at. Astronomers know that the universe is expanding and this is predicted from general relativity and the first observations that confirmed the predictions of general relativity regarding expansion were made by Edwin Hubble almost a hundred years ago in the 1920s. An aspect of expansion is that the expansion is proportional everywhere so that as the universe expands every distance expands by the same amount. The expansion rate is the same everywhere in the universe at a given moment in time. So if we start with galaxies that are separated by specific distances, say 2, 3, and 5, as in the figure I have here, and the universe expands by two times in some amount of time, then all those distances will be bigger by two times. And so before we had 2, 3, and 5 billion light years in distances between these three galaxies, and now, sometime later, we have 4, 6, and 10 billion light years because everything's expanded by the same amount. And what this means is if you observe from any specific galaxy and look at the other distant galaxies, ones that are further away will appear to go farther in the same amount of time and thus the ones that are further away will appear to have higher velocities at that moment in time. So, for example, in this figure, we have uh, the galaxy labeled MW, which I'll call the Milky Way. And if I look at the other galaxies, A and B, which galaxy appeared to go farther in the given time? Well, if you're the Milky Way galaxy and you look at A, its beginning distance is 2. And the beginning distance to B is 5 billion light years. Later, the new distance for A is 4 billion and the new distance for B is 10 billion. Galaxy A moved 2 billion light years more than it, uh, than it had before. Galaxy B moved 5 billion light years and so Galaxy B began farther away and it even went further when the universe expanded. And so from the perspective of the Milky Way galaxy, Galaxy B has a higher velocity away. You could get this result if you started at any of the galaxies. So how fast does the universe expand in some amount of time? We need to know the rate of the expansion of the universe in order to determine this. And it turns out that we can get this from looking at the Hubble plot. And so the Hubble plot is a graph that shows the velocity of galaxies versus their distance. Let's begin with a simple example where we have a line on a graph. This line I have, uh, the line is intercepting with the, uh, on the y-axis at 3 and then it increases uh, on the x-axis. You might recall that the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. x and y are the coordinates for a particular point on a line in the x and the y axis. b is the y-intercept. And so in this case, for the line that I have drawn, the y-intercept would be where the line is intercepting the y-axis, that's at coordinate 3, so b would be equal to 3. m is the slope of the graph, that is, uh, how steep or how shallow the line is. To get the slope, you might remember that slope is rise over run, so some amount in y divided by some amount in x for two arbitrary points on the line. And the more you rise, the steeper the slope will be. So m tells you about the steepness of the line. For a Hubble plot, where the line always intersects on the y-axis at zero, we don't need a y-intercept, we don't need b. <coughs> and in fact, Hubble's law, the velocity of a galaxy equal to h times d, is the same as the equation of a line. It turns out that if we use the equation of a line to 
uh, analyze Hubble's plot, we know that H, Hubble's constant, is the slope of the line. It turns out that if you know H, you know the rate of the expansion of the galaxies. And so the expansion rate is how fast the universe is expanding at a given moment in time. If you can figure out an accurate value for Hubble's constant, you can learn how long the universe has been expanding for. Let's describe three different possible universes. I've got a Hubble plot here. The y-axis represents velocities for ga measured galaxies, and the distance is on the x-axis. Here are three different plots. I have a black line, a green line, and a blue line. We can ask questions about these lines. We can ask uh, which one has a higher slope. Well, the one that has the higher slope is the black line. It's uh, the steepest of these lines. And the uh, lowest slope, or the most shallow slope, is the blue line. What this means for expansion rates is that higher slope means faster expansion rate for a particular universe. And a shallower slope means a lower or slower expansion rate. If these were three different universes that were all the same size, they wouldn't all be the same age. The one that expanded the fastest would be the youngest because it didn't need to take as much time to get to its current size. And so if these were three different universes, the youngest would be the universe represented by the black line in the Hubble plot, and the oldest universe would be the one that's represented by the blue line because at its current size, uh, to get to that current size, it would have to have expanded for a longer period of time because it was expanding slower. If you know the expansion rate, you can figure out how long the expansion has been going on for. How do you figure out the age of the universe from knowing Hubble's constant? The velocity of galaxies are measured in a speed, so for example, kilometers per second. And the distance to a galaxy is measured with a length, so for example, kilometers. If we solve for h, if we want to know what the Hubble constant is, it is velocity divided by distance. If we look at this in terms of the units of these uh, variables, then we have speed divided by a length, so kilometers per second divided by kilometers. What you get is one over seconds, or one over a time unit. So if you want to know the expansion time of the universe, then you just need Hubble's constant. To get the time, you take the reciprocal of Hubble's constant, 1 over h. And that gives you the age of the universe. For the current best value of Hubble's constant that astronomers are able to measure at this time, we get a universe that is approximately 13.7 billion years old, which is plenty old enough to have the development of galaxies and stars that we actually observe today. Here is a Hubble plot where I have velocity versus distance, and I've drawn four different galaxies on this line. And I can ask you this question, which galaxy is closest to the Milky Way galaxy? The one that's closest is going to be the one that has a smaller distance on the graph, and so that will be galaxy A. And the farthest galaxy will be galaxy D. And then I can ask this question, which galaxy emitted its light farthest from our present time? The answer to that depends on the distance to the galaxy. We know that the farther away a galaxy that is observed, the further back in time it emitted its light that we're receiving right now. So which galaxy emitted its light farthest from our present time? That would be galaxy D. And so to think of time in a Hubble plot, you have to look at the distance axis, which is the x-axis. The farther away in distance something is, the further back in time that light is coming from. What if the expansion rate of the universe isn't constant? That is, what if over time the expansion rate changes? In that case, we wouldn't have a straight line for the Hubble plot. For example, you might have a Hubble plot that looks like this, where the line is not straight, but it's curved. Now we can ask these questions. Which galaxy is farthest, closest, and which one emits their light furthest back in time? Well, it'll be the same as what we said before. A is the closest, D is the farthest galaxy, and because D is the farthest, it emitted its light furthest back in time. Then we can ask about the steepness of the plot, because remember, the slope of the curve 
tells us about the expansion rate. And the higher the slope, the faster the expansion. And so in this plot, we see that D is on a part of the curve with a higher slope. So D is at a time in the universe when the uh, expansion was happening fastest. It had a faster expansion rate. A is at a part of the curve where the steepness of the slope is lower, and so A is at a time in the universe when the expansion rate was lower. Our final question here is, as time goes on, what is happening to the expansion rate depicted on the Hubble plot here? If further back in time the expansion rate is higher, and then closer to our present time the expansion rate is lower, as time has gone on in this particular universe, the expansion rate has slowed down. Astronomers fully expected to measure a slowing expansion rate for our universe. Teams of astronomers were measuring the most distant galaxies in the late 1990s to determine the slowing of the expansion rate. They looked at type 1a supernovae, the most distant um, explosions that we're able to measure. Here is the Hubble plot that is uh, similar to the one actually measured by these astronomers. If we look at a similar set of galaxies on this plot, A, B, C, and D, the one with the highest slope is the one that's closest to the Milky Way. So galaxy A is at a time in the universe when the expansion rate was fastest. And galaxy D, which is further back in time, is at a time in the universe when the expansion rate was slower. This is more similar to what, our actual un what is actually measured for galaxies than a slowing expansion rate. What is actually happening here is that as time has gone on, the expansion rate has gotten faster. And so what the implication of this is, is that the universe has an accelerated expansion rate. The astronomers that measured this, the two competing teams of astronomers that were measuring these type 1a supernovae back in the 1990s, received a Nobel Prize in Physics a couple years ago for this discovery. Astronomers would like to know what is causing the expansion rate to accelerate. Cosmologists know that the thing that causes the universe to uh, have an accelerating expansion or a decelerating expansion is the matter energy content of the universe. How much stuff there is in the universe. And matter and energy we know from Einstein's relativity is equivalent. So you can have a certain amount of matter and energy totally in the universe. We already know that for our galaxy and galaxy clusters that the matter that makes it up is about 15% regular matter, that is things that you're familiar with, protons, neutrons, etc. And then 85% dark matter. We're not really sure what the dark matter is, if it's a particle or if it's something else, but we know that 85% of galaxies and galaxy clusters is dark matter. But in order to have an accelerated expansion rate, the kind that we measure, there needs to be a repulsive uh, portion of the matter energy content of the universe. How much is it? Well, according to Einstein's equations, there is a component of this matter energy content predicted by something called the cosmological constant. According to this, to account for the accelerated expansion that astronomers actually measure, most of the universe's matter energy content would be uh, this, uh, uh, this repulsive energy. We don't know what it really is yet, and astronomers are calling it dark energy right now. And according to our current best measurements, only a little less than 5% of the entire universe is made up of regular matter, what we think of as atoms, things that interact with the electromagnetic force. And then there's dark matter, which makes up about 24% of our entire universe. But in order to get the accelerated expansion, over 70% of the matter energy content of the universe is dark energy. And we're still trying to figure out what that is.